After every heavy rainfall and every winter thaw, I get a massive pooling of water in my backyard. Then this water makes its way into my basement, causing all sorts of issues. It also doesn't help that my backyard is on a slight grade, so my neighbors run off drains into my yard, making the pooling even worse. To fix this problem, I'm going to put in a rain garden, and I'm going to show you how to do it without power tools or heavy machinery. Let's hop to it. A rain garden is a special type of garden that is built to retain large amounts of runoff and rainwater. Putting in a rain garden involves digging down about one and a half feet deep, putting down a layer of coarse sand, then on top of that, a layer of triple mix soil, then planting in long rooted native plants that thrive in wet conditions. All of these components work together to vastly improve improve your yard's ability to retain excess rainwater and runoff, keeping it out of your basement and away from your foundation. And not only are rain gardens great for draining and eliminating excess stormwater, but they also attract and provide food sources for pollinators and filter storm runoff. Rain gardens benefit you, they benefit our ecosystem, and they look beautiful. Here's what you'll need to put in your own rain garden. A long-handled round point shovel, a five pound garden pick, also known as a mattock, a bow rake, a wheelbarrow, ground marking spray paint with a respirator, triple mix soil, mine is a mix of loam, compost, and topsoil, coarse sand, shredded hardwood mulch, and work boots. I'll go into more details on the triple mix soil and coarse sand and all the other details that you probably want to know. So don't worry, just keep watching. I'll tell you everything you need to know. Step one, plan out your rain garden. Take a notepad, draw the shape of your desired rain garden, and list the types of plants that you'll be putting in. Common rain garden shapes include circular and kidney shapes. This is the really fun part about this project, so have some fun with it. But make sure that you're using native plants that thrive in wet conditions. Native plant selection will differ from place to place, so research which native plants are available to your area. Your rain garden should also be at least 10 feet away from your foundation. Just to illustrate what we'll be doing, we'll be digging down one and a half feet. Then we'll fill in the first one third of the hole with concrete sand, then fill the next second third of the pit with triple mix soil. Then we'll put in our long rooted water loving plants. Then we'll top it off with mulch. This way, when we get a heavy rainfall or a big winter thaw, the water percolates downward and gets retained by our long rooted water loving plants and held in reserve by our layer of sand. Step two, call your locates. This is the call before you dig hotline service that your public utility companies use to mark water, sewage, and natural gas lines. When you call this number, your local utility company will come out and spray paint the location of these underground lines and then give you a report on it. This step is important because when you're digging the pit, you don't wanna hit a gas line with your shovel and blow up the whole neighborhood. Be aware that the call before you dig hotlines will only mark utility lines on the parts of your land that touch government property, like the sidewalk or the end of your driveway. If you're putting a rain garden into a private backyard like I am, you should also call a private locate service in addition to the public locate service so they can mark the utilities in your backyard. For example, my backyard has an electrical cable running beneath the grass, and I really don't want to hit that with my shovel when I'm digging. Public call before you dig services are usually free, and with the private locate services, you have to pay a fee. Call in your locates at least a few weeks prior to digging, since every locates company is very busy with other requests and your locates report is only good for a certain number of days. Step three, take your marking spray paint and outline your dig area. This provides a visual so you know where to dig. I opted for a kidney shape. Step four, sharpen your shovels. This is an optional but highly recommended step. A nice sharp shovel cuts into soil so much easier, which means less work for you. I use this cool rotary mower sharpener attachment which goes onto a power drill. You can use a wheel sharpener if you have one. Whatever you do, wear eye protection when sharpening your shovel. Step five, start digging. My backyard soil is very compacted and hardened with clay. For soil like this, use a mattock to break the soil then shovel it away. Plan to dig at least one and a half feet deep. Some rain garden tutorials recommend four to nine inches, but I don't think that's deep enough because a lot of rain garden plants with longer roots need about six to nine inches of depth at full maturity. A helpful tip, you're going to be digging up and removing a lot of old subsoil. I'd recommend renting a clean fill bin because you can't throw away soil at most landfills. 
A company in my city provides clean fill bins that you can rent, and the rental fee includes drop-off and removal. Very convenient and highly recommended, because I completely filled up my five-yard bin. But hold on there! Important shoveling announcement. Meet Jeremy. He is going to be digging with the shovel for the next two days. But is Jeremy shoveling correctly? No, no! Bending and twisting your back is the wrong way to shovel. That's how you get a back injury. Let's do that again. Except this time, keep a straight back, squat down, then lift with your legs. Then safely release the dirt. Much better. Back straight, lift with your legs, then safely release the dirt. And do not swing and twist at the waist. And make sure you wear sunscreen, have a good wide-brimmed hat, and stay hydrated because you have a lot of digging to do. And eventually, you're gonna have a big gaping hole in your backyard that looks just like this. It took about two and a half full days of digging and wheelbarrowing to do this. Another tip, make the hole bowl-shaped. You don't want some hard vertical edges like it's a bathtub. You want nice sweeping edges just like a bowl. And having a bowl-shaped hole is gonna encourage water to flow in and towards the middle of your garden, which is exactly what you want. And that's where this rate comes in handy. You can just scrape through the sides here to make sure that you don't have any super hard edges or anything. And just do it until the edges are nice and smooth, much like a bowl. Keep this rake handy, because we're gonna need this. And a bowl-shaped pit also allows us to set up three distinct zones for our rain garden's plants. The pit's outer edges have the lowest depth, and there you can put in plants that have more shallow roots. And moving towards the center of our pit, the second zone is our intermediate depth. And the middlemost zone is our deepest, and that's where the plants with the deepest roots will go. Our next step is to start filling the hole. Now we're going to shovel the sand into our pit. We're going to shovel a thin layer of sand into the pit, rake it in to make sure it blends with the existing soil, and then just pile more of the sand on top. Fill one third of the hole with coarse sand. The sand needs to be coarse and clean so it can drain properly. I used construction sand, which is perfect for this. You don't want the fine, powdery type of sand because fine sand hardens up like concrete when it gets wet, which would be very bad since our rain garden needs to drain. Observe. This is concrete sand, and that is triple mix. Now this isn't actually made out of concrete. This is a coarse sand that is added to concrete to add strength to the concrete mix, or to give it a little bit of texture. This concrete sand is nice and coarse. It actually allows water to run straight through. It drains, which is exactly what we want. Let me show you. Watch as this water gets swallowed up by the sand. Look at all that water. It drained right through, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. And that's a small but really important note about the type of sand that you choose for your rain garden. It has to be coarse sand. Take your bow rake, Rake in the first layer of coarse sand to mix it in with the old subsoil. Then add in more sand until you filled in the first one third of the hole. Then walk across the sand and tamp it down with your feet. This will compact the sand and reduce its tendency to settle over time. You wanna compress the sand with each layer of new sand that you set down. Next up, fill the next second third of the hole with triple mix. Triple mix is a mixture of loam, organic manure, and topsoil. And that is perfect for our rain garden. Dump a layer of triple mix into the pit. Then rake and mix the first layer of triple mix with the sand, just to blend it in together. Tamp down the sand with your feet to compact it as you shovel it into your pit. Then continue adding triple mix until the second third of the pit has been filled. Don't fill it up all the way to the top with triple mix. We still need a bit of space at the top for our mulch, and we still want the pit to be lower than the surrounding soil. Now it's time to put in our plants. Plants nowadays are pretty expensive, so make sure you choose your plants wisely. They should have long roots, need to thrive in wet conditions, and should be native to your region. I like perennials since they are low maintenance. Once you've put in your rain garden's plants, immediately water them. I'd recommend adding a planting and transplant solution to your water to help your new plants establish themselves. You can add rocks or bricks to the garden edges, that's entirely up to you. I went with bricks because I had a bunch of old bricks lying around. 
Our last step is to add mulch. Shredded hardwood mulch is best for this. And you don't need to throw down a super thick layer of mulch. Put down just enough to cover the surface of your garden. This mulch helps protect your garden from weeds and protects the soil from getting overheated and dried out by the bright sun during hotter summer days. This will protect our newly transplanted plants and prevents our triple mixed layer from hardening and cracking under the sun's heat. And that's it! We're done! I already have pollinators visiting our garden and the plants haven't even been in the soil for 24 hours. I love seeing that. Rain gardens are an excellent way to protect your basement and foundation from water intrusion. They beautify your yard, and rain gardens give our ecosystem some much needed help. Some last minute tips for rain garden success. One, the best time to build a rain garden is spring or early autumn. Doing it in the peak summer is fine, but if you do that, you will have to be extra diligent with watering your plants to ensure that they survive the hot summer heat and dryness. Two, rent a clean fill rental bin because it's really nice to have someone else haul off the old subsoil. Three, stretch before you get working, get a good night's rest, and have a good breakfast. You'll be able to work longer and uninterrupted, and you will reduce the risk of injury. Putting in a rain garden is a hard two days work, so give your body what it needs. A rain garden's plants take about two years to mature, so be sure to water your new plants regularly and check up on them to make sure that they survive. And in a couple years time, your rain garden will be soaking up water and doing its job. And even before the plants mature, your garden's improved soil conditions will make your soil drain better. For example, I haven't had any water pooling up at all since I put in my rain garden, and my rain garden is barely three months old. So how much did this project cost me? $650 for the plants, $430 for the coarse sand and triple mix, this included delivery, $400 for the five yard clean fill bin rental and disposal, $237 for the private utility locate service, $90 for the mattock, $90 for the shovel, $20 for the planting and transplant solution, $17 for marking spray paint, $17 for the bow rake, $15 for the mulch, for a grand total of $1,966. That's a lot lower than the $4,000 that a landscaping company quoted me for a new rain garden. And a private excavation company quoted me $3,000 just to dig the hole. That's it. I hope you found this video useful. Get into the conversation and tell me in the comments below what kind of plants you're going to put into your rain garden. Has your basement been flooded by excess rainwater? Tell me how your experience went and ask any questions that you might have. Bye!